can raging storms be silenced? For every hurt and anxious thought, grief and isolation, freedom, healing, purpose, a way in the wilderness, streams in the wasteland. Are there miracles even in the impossible? Morning. This morning, I felt like, like I was slain in the spirit. I had a hard time waking up while the rain was you know, falling. You know. But uh, it's good to be here. And look at the person beside you and say, I'm glad you woke up. May fear of the Lord pag nagising. Okay, but uh, yeah, I can relate to some people na uh, I'd rather lie down at an additional hour or two hours since it's Sunday. But glad to see all of you here in our morning service. And if this is your first time, we've been going through a series called Even in the Impossible. And the theme of this series is pinag-uusapan po natin yung miracles ni Jesus. Not all but some major miracles of Christ that he performed in the gospel. And as a result, it should build up our faith that even in impossible situations that you and I face, we have a God who can do impossible things. And so it should lead and stre strengthen our faith even more to believe for the impossible. Not only that, but you can also believe that miracles can happen through you. Sabi mo, through me. Mag nag pray kang office mate, mag nag pray kang tita, tito, kamag-anak, you can also believe na the Lord will perform impossible things through your prayer. And then, thus, you can point them to God. Yan po yung pinag-uusapan natin the past weeks, the miracles of Christ. Now, question I want to ask us today is, what can cause God to perform miracles? Yeah. What can cause him to perform miracles? Many years ago, there was a, um, a movement in the charismatic world that, that actually taught ang kailangan mo lang is number one, Christiano ka, okay? Uh, kailangan mo lang yung salita ng Diyos tsaka faith. Pag meron kang salita ng Diyos tsaka faith, then lahat ng pangako sa Bible sa'yo na. Wow. So, yung naging health and wealth movement. Ah, so, hyper-faith. Alam ko ang faith natin, kailangan hyper, but I just use that term. Hyper-faith movement. Now, I just need the word of God and 100% faith on that word, then all the miracles can happen. Wow. Okay, uh, kung gusto mo manalo sa loto, yun yung gawin mo. Okay, 100% faith on the word. And then, word of God, yun yung formula. And when you study it further, some people really embrace that teaching that when you just have faith and you just embrace the word of God, which I believe totoo naman in some aspects, pero some embrace that there's guaranteed. Okay? Every promise in the Bible with just 100% faith, guaranteed it's yours which led to prosperity gospel. Yun yung history nun eh. Which led to the belief, extreme belief, that everyone will not be sick when they embrace this word. And so there are some proponents and pastors in the body of Christ that actually were questioning that belief, that teaching that if you just have faith, everything will be given. A major question to that is, sino dito may pinag-pray kayo instead na gumaling na matay? I did. I did. Sino dito, pamilya nyo? Okay, you were praying for your loved one to be healed. 100% faith, ah. And 100% embracing the word of God, claiming. Pero yet still the Lord took him away. Anybody? 
Meron. So, a question to that thought is, so, ibig sabihin, wala kang faith? Kaya hindi sinagot ni Lord yung prayer mo? So, ibig sabihin, kahit feeling ko 100% faith, kulang pa pala, dapat 200% faith. Kaya hindi sinagot ni Lord yung prayer ko. You know, that teaching is quite dangerous and um, has a lot of cracks. That it's not going to stand. So, word of God, totoo naman yan, di ba? Agree tayo. We, we talk about the word of God. There's power in the word of God. But if it's just the formula, like 100% faith and 100% word, guaranteed answered prayer palagi. <sighs> we have to ask ourselves again, is it really that? Kaya yung question, yun lang ba ang formula for God to perform miracle? Faith lang. E paano kung hindi nga sinagot? We're going to answer this question looking at the passage of what other things can cause God to perform miracles. What are some things that can cause God to perform miracles if it's not just our faith. If it's not just the word of God, what are some things that can push him to perform some miracles? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm trying to make you feel unsettled. Yun po yung sinasadya kong gawin. Okay? To shake that belief that it's really just faith. But what if God has a different answer to your prayer? Let's talk about that. What can cause God to perform miracles? Luke chapter 7. And we're going to answer that question in a while. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain. And his disciples and a great crowd went with him. Now, Nain is a small village somewhere in Galilee. Okay? Remember, yung ministry po ni Christ majority nasa Galilee, tas yung iba nasa Judea. It's a region. Okay, hindi naman pumunta si Christ sa papunta ng Europe. Majority of his miracles were just in that geography. It's the church that actually spread to the different parts of the world. And if you notice, the town named Nain means, alam yung ibig ng Nain eh, no? Bago mag-10, Nain. 8, Nain, 10. Nain is, means pleasant, no? means beautiful. So Nain, kasi maganda daw siya eh. It's medyo on top of the hill siya. So nakikita mo yung view. But Nain's name means it's pleasant and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful place. As Jesus drew near to the gate of the town, so parang siyang village, small village. Behold, a man who had died was being carried out the only son of his mother. And she was a widow and a considerable crowd from the town was with her. Merong funeral procession. And you see, ang question ko nga eh, di ba, if it's a beautiful city and it's a happy city or village, happy, pleasant village, that's the meaning of Nain. Why is there sadness here? It's, the, the city is not living up to its name. If it's a beautiful town and a pleasant town, why is there crying and grieving? And that's what Jesus saw. Pag tinina mo po yung verse dito, no, medyo maraming text lang. Um, the widow. So this woman is having a hard time when Jesus visited that village. Maybe the majority of the town had a funeral procession. Imagine with me, no? Habang nagsalita ako. Yung, di ba, ginagawa natin yun? Yung nagpupunta tayo. Pag sa Guadalupe, doon ako dumadaan eh. Minsan, hindi naman karga-karga yung coffin. May car naman. But the relatives and the loved ones are walking. So imagine that scene when Jesus entered that village. Meron pong funeral procession that's taking place. And there's grieving and there's sadness. And you... 
then you start seeing the, 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 the dilemma of the widow. Siyempre, pag widow, ano ba ibig sabihin ng widow? Ayan, widow. No? Yung pag sinabi mong widow, yung mga iba hindi nakuha, yung nakaganan pa rin. <laughs> yung widow, namatayang ka na, correct? Namatayang ka na ng husband. Pero yung dilemma ng widow was that he, she also lost her only son. Now we don't know the age of this son. So yung dinadalang kabaong, yung anak ng widow, namatayan na nga ng asawa yung widow, namatayan pa ng anak. Only son. So you see the dilemma of the widow, if you're the widow, sige, mag ano tayo, um, try to put your place in the widow's shoes. You're marching towards the gate of your village. What will you think? What will you feel? We don't know how recent namatay yung husband niya. What will you feel? Death is just around the corner. Siguro pag if I'm the widow, I can't come. I'll try to pour out my heart, diba? I'll invite one of my neighbors. No, sis. Ano ba naman to si kamatayan? Parang trip ako palagi. Last year, I did a memorial service. Sometime here, July also. July 2022. And then when I went to the wake, I just felt like the loved ones and the, the friends who were there, yung nakikiramay, Just we're really, really downcast. Alam mo yung pagod, may, naka, naka-encounter ka na ba ng kaibigan mo or you know someone, yung talagang downcast, yung, yung talagang kailangan mag-100 stress tabs in a day para mabuhay. Kailangan mag-extra jaws, yung alam mo yung, yung talagang down na down, yung parang wala na talagang lakas, yung mga iba doon, and not exaggerating, yung wala ng luha na kailangan tumulo. Yun talagang sad sila, yung parang drained na sila, burned out. Parang kailangan ni IV ah, para ma-hydrate. And I can understand because it's a death of a loved one. But this is what I noticed with them. It was the third death in a span of one month. So ang kwento nila sa akin, kaya pala talagang down na down na sila because yung inofficiate Inofficiate. Nag-officiate ka ba ng memorial service? Wedding yun eh. The one that I was doing the funeral service was the third person who died in their family in a span of one month. Yung first week, if I'm not mistaken, um, tita. Second week, cousin. Yung third, tito. Yung fourth, wife. Meron pang namatay the week after eh. in their family. And then a year ago, before that, may nasunu- nasunog, yung illustration mo kanina, nasunog. And unfortunately, one of their loved ones got stuck there and died. So death is just around the corner. And so when I was doing a funeral service, sabi ko, Lord, ano, ano, ano sasabihin ko dito? Parang hindi na makikinig to. Nalulunog na sa kalungkutan to at sa hopelessness. But I just had to preach what I had to preach. But... Here's what I said. After, after what, here's what I did. After I shared the word of God, I, I just prayed a prayer of faith. And sabi ko, Lord, ah, magpipray ako dito. Ah, medyo makapal ang mukha ako, Lord. Ah. Uh, panindigan mo yung prayer request ko, Lord. Ah. Pero sasabihin ko para magising sila lahat. And I said, we're going to pray that no more death this year. Yun na. Faith started. Amen! Gumaganan. I'm saying, from the eh, seniors yung mga nasa harap, I love you seniors. Yung na lola-lolo nandun sa harap eh. Mga ganun eh. Actually, tulog habang nagsishare ako. Ano ba sinishare ko? Lamentations ba? No? <laughs> tulog eh. Pero nung, nung pagkatapos ko mag-share, 
Binigyan ko ng kape, tito. Three in one. And then I said, we're going to pray. Let's all stand, sabi ko. We're going to pray. Siguro mga nasa 30 people lang yun. We're going to pray that there will be no death that will take place again. We're going to experience life and good health. Nung sinabi ko, sabi ng mga senior, Amen! Ano nakainom ba to? <laughs> Nagising. But yet, and so I was starting to pray that Lord, you will do an impossible thing. Death is just around the corner. In the one, maybe I'm sharing this story now to those people who are watching, to those who are listening. Some of you can relate. Death was just around the corner. And think about the widow. The widow, ganun yung feeling niya. Namatayan na siya ng asawa. Namatayan pa yung only son. You know how traumatic that is? Sobrang nakaka-trauma ay eh yung ako having a parenting a child Magkasakit nga lang yung mga anak natin, natotroma na tayo eh. Di ba, fever lang. Oh my gosh, pneumonia, pneumonia. Ganun kagad yung conclusion eh. Magka-fever lang. Dengue, dengue. How much more you lose two loved ones? Nain had supposed to be a beautiful, pleasant place, and yet there's death. Never question God. Kala ko ba, Lord, Sino dito may name kayo mag-pleasant yung ibig sabihin? Sino dito? Name mo na in. Na in mercado. Diba? Sino dito, alam mo yung name ng meaning mo and yung name ng meaning mo really means a lot. Yung it has a significant meaning. And then have you ever noticed mag may pinagdaanan kang situation, parang you start to question yourself. Akala ko ba Lord, pag naging Christian ako masisimple. Masasim. But parang mas naging komplikado nung naging Christian ako. Yun naman ang tanong ba? Ang dami mong tanong because of the problem. Yan, I'm sure, ang pinagdadaanan ng widow. Death is just around the corner. The second dilemma of the widow is grief and pain. Pumasok si Jesus sa Nain village. Nandun yung mga tano, nandun yung mga barangay officials, nandun si mayor, nandun yung mga kamag-anak. And then there's grief and pain. Grabe rin yung pinagdaanan ng widow, ah. Here's what I've noticed and while I was looking at this message. Have you ever come to a point in your life na so much immersed ka sa grief and pain, you don't have time to put your trust in God? Alam mo yun, sa sobrang nalunod ka na sa problema, na sa pawan ka, parang gusto mo, pero parang talagang pull down ka na, hindi ka makatawag kay Lord. Yun ang nararamdaman ng widow. It's that just that, not just the emotion, it's the fact that I'm going through a tough time na parang gusto mo mag 8 a.m. pero talagang wala nang lakas eh. Alam ko yung series ni Pastor Patrick, yung Even in the Impossible, pero parang wala na talagang lakas. Yan ang pinagdaanan ng, dile- ng widow. Yan yung dilemma niya nung papasok si Christ sa village. And the third one is this. No means of living and susceptible of being scammed. Alam mo ba yung widow, hindi po sila entitled or women. I don't know why it's a perverted. That's another discussion. I have to study that and I have to ask my professor who is an Old Testament scholar. But anyway, the one if you study, women are not entitled to a property. So a woman, pag naging widow siya, kailangan meron siyang male next of kin that will carry the name or that will the name of the property, the property will be transferred to that male descendant of hers or a next of kin. Eh pag kunyari, so hindi na siya property owner, eh paano kung may property yung husband na punta sa anak niya, eh namatay yung anak niyang lalaki, so sino ang maghahawak ng property? That's why, ang problema dyan, kung merong estate, estate yung inheritance, ano, yung property na ipapamana mo. So kung namatay yung anak, or let's say, bago namatay yung husband, usually ang ginagawa doon is mag-hire sila ng lawyer or scribe. Yung scribe, tutulungan yung husband to make sure the transition takes effect na yung property matatransfer ng maayos. Para yung widow, meron siyang property kahit it's not under her name, under the name of her next of kin or descendant, male descendant, or the next of kin of the husband. 
Yun ang problema. Ngayon, sa mundo ni Jesus, maraming corrupt na lawyer tsaka na scribe. I'm not saying all lawyers are corrupt. I'm just saying there are lawyers who were so corrupt that they'll make a way na instead of making sure the property is transferred to the widow or to the next of kin of the widow of the husband, they started get acquiring the properties for themselves. And then the widow is scammed. Wala na siyang property. Kaya po, na natin yung verse, yung sinabi ni Jesus dito sa book of Mark. Ano? And in his teaching, Jesus said, beware of the scribes, yung mga maayos na mga special powers, SPA. Special powers of attorney. Who like to walk around in long robes and like greetings in the marketplaces and have the best seats in the synagogues in the places of those at feasts who devour very religious sila nag 8 a.m. service din sila not here in another church but yet they scam widows kaya galit na galit si Jesus kasi maraming scammers akala natin ngayon lang yung scammers Maraming scammers dyan na religious pa. Di ba na naglilift ang hands pa. Nag-worship pa. Nag-small group pa, patay tayo dyan. But they devour widows' houses. Yan yung sinasabi ni Jesus. Ano sabi ni Jesus? They will receive the greater condemnation. Grabe yung dilemma ng widow. Death. the grief and pain of losing two of your loved ones and the, the susceptibility of being scammed and no means of who will support the widow that's why it makes sense sa new testament pala ano sinasabi sa mga ibang passages sa new testament take care of the widow take care of the orphans yung mga walang magulang take care of the widows kasi they have no means of support thank god our world gradually changed. Widows and women now can work and support themselves. But here's the thing. Christ sees and is mindful of the marginalized. Christ is mindful of those people who are marginalized. And that's the kind of God we serve. Let's look at what's next, what's happening here. So they were marching towards the gate and they're about to bury the widow's son. And when the Lord saw, out of the maybe hundreds of people who were there, the Lord saw the one who was in pain. He had compassion on her. Anong po ba ibig sabihin ng compassion pag dinefine po natin? And compassion means, sorry, I'm to be, to be moved within your bowels. Alam niyo yung bowels, di ba? A-E-I-O-U. Bowels. Yung to be moved within you. Yung, yung hindi mo ma... Alam niyo yung sobrang naawa ka, it affected you internally. That's a, It's a language that the Greek is showing here that you can't help but do something. It's moving something within you. That's compassion. Eh? And makita ni Jesus, the one who was in pain, the widow, who just lost two loved ones. Iyak nang iyak na yan. Baka nga wala nang maiyak yan. Eh. The Lord saw in the midst of a hundred people approximately in the crowd, Jesus sees that woman who was in pain. Let me tell you this. You come here, And you worship God, Christ sees you. And He sees your pain. He sees my pain. And He validates that. And that's the kind of God we serve. Raul, ilan na ba ang world population natin ngayon? Seven? 
Counting eight, pa eight na ba? In the billions of people in the world, God sees who's in need. What did Jesus say? He saw, he had compassion, and he said to her, do not weep. Alam mo sabi ng do not weep? Hindi lang yung wag umiyak, saka yung sinasabi ni Lord, umiyak. Hindi naman siguro ganun si Lord. Meron ka bang kilalang ganun? Iyak ka na, iyak ka. Black pick lang yan, iyak ka na, iyak ka. Nag-concert lang yung BTS, umiyak ka. Shhh, tama na, arte mo ah. You know what I'm talking about? Gaslighting. Galit na galit yung mga tao dyan eh. Di ba? Pag ginag-gaslight ako eh. Paiyakin mo ako. You know what I'm talking about? Yung, it, sometimes, maybe it's the personality of the person or yung we, yung we don't really see the emotions of the person. We don't know how to empathize, in short. So Jesus was not saying, Arte mo, huwag kumiyak. Patay lang yan, huwag kumiyak. No, no, that's what Jesus was saying. He said, do not. You know, it really sounds more of like a comfort and assurance. Alam mo yung naalala mo yung preaching last week, yung touch. Yung Jesus touched the leper and said, I'm willing. And that touch was a message of empathy and compassion. It's the same thing here. He did not just see with compassion, he comforted the woman. It's okay. Parang ganun. Tayo yung sinasabi natin eh, pag yung anak ko umiyak, it's okay. Hindi, pinagsasabihin pa rin ako ng asawa ko. Minsan kasi, ano ba yan? Sugat lang niya. Girl yan. Oh, come here, Lucy. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Cry some more. It's a message of comfort. So Christ was not gaslighting when he said, do not weep. Christ was not invalidating the emotions of the woman. He was saying, it was a comfort. It's okay. Why will he say, do not weep? In verse 14, Christ said, then he came up, si Jesus, pumunta sa beer, touch the beer. Beer is the frame where the coffin is being where it's attached to and being carried. And the bearers stood still. And Christ approached the coffin and he said, Young man, I say to you, Arise. Ah, katakot naman yan. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Parang si Paul Bearer, yung undertaker, alam mo Alam niyo yan? Sino na na wrestling dito? Ako lang. Ako lang yung worldly. By the way, naging Christian na si Undertaker, ha? Pero si Paul Bearer naman. Hindi <laughs> ko alam. <laughs> But that's okay. <laughs> Sorry, Lord. Nasaan ako? Ayun, o. Oh, sabi niya, arise. Marami naman si Lord. And the dead man sat up. Wow. Si Dr. Luke yan. Ha? So medyo detailed siya. And began to speak. And Jesus gave him to his mother. <laughs> no matter how scary and freaky it is. Jesus performs a miracle to raise the dead person to life. Nakakita na ba kayong ganyan? <laughs> nah, honestly, sa wake, pumunta ka, nakatingin ka pa, Tapos may lumapit na Christian, nilay hands lang yung coffin. Gumising ka. Ano sabi mo? Weird no ah. Eh paano ako nagumising? Di ba minsan yung nakatingin? I'm not making fun. I'm just trying to imagine if this happens in our world today. And you're looking at the person. Sige, titig ka sa akin. Ha? 
How will you react? <laughs> eh, ganun yung nangyari. But it's, it's an impossible miracle, isn't it? It is an unbelievable miracle. Christ raised a dead person to life. To be honest, I would love to see this. Would I like the miracle be performed through me? Sige. But to be honest, I would like to see this miracle take place even in our world today. Because at the end of the day, it would point others to Jesus. This is an impossible miracle. As much as feeding the 5,000 is, this one also is a powerful miracle that Christ overcame death. That he is truly life and the resurrection. We're not serving a dead God. We're not serving a God who was defeated by death. He's a God who makes sure that he subdues death. That he rules over death. That he steps over death. Then he's the resurrection and the life. How many of you believe that's the God that we worship? We shouldn't be afraid of death. So, the question, remember the question I asked a while ago. What would cause God to perform a miracle aside from just our faith and His promises? Because dito po, parang hindi ko makita sa passage, yung woman was begging Jesus. It's not written here that the widow was desperately begging for Jesus to come, correct? Correct me if I'm wrong, if you're looking at the verse now. The woman was busy crying, sulking, grieving, and in pain. Did not have time to text Jesus to come over to the barangay of Naim. Right? Because he, she was going through so much pain. So the question is, what would cause God to perform a miracle in our lives and to other people's lives that even sometimes we don't call upon Him? It's His compassion. That's the other side. It's not just our faith, but it's God, Christ's compassion. How Feeling the pain, sympathizing with the woman. Remember, that's what he also did to Lazarus. And part of it, of course, he wanted the miracles will always point him, point others to his real identity. That's the ultimate motive here, to glorify God and him being the, the Messiah and God. But other than that, it's the human emotions of Christ that drives him to perform miracles. His compassion to each one of us. Kaya nga dapat as a church, we reflect Christ and we're also compassionate to others. Because that's what Jesus did. We're serving a God who's not just divine. We're also serving a God who's human. Huh? Totoo ba yun? We're worshiping someone who's divine. But we're also worshiping Jesus now who's 100% human. Now, are we saying if you remove the humanity, Christ is not sympathetic? No. It's really in his character that 100% God, 100% man, there's just a 100% love towards humanity and empathy towards mankind. That's why he performed this miracle. Think about it. The dilemma of the woman, death was just around the corner. Grief and pain and then no means of living. But because of Christ's compassion, 
he steps into the picture and then he makes death, flips it, flips it to life. And then because of what Christ has done, he turned mourning into dancing. He turned grief and pain into joy and hope. And then because of what Christ has done, now the young son is alive again. There's provision and property protection. Think about what Christ has done here, ladies and gentlemen, to the marginalized person. He uplifts that person, turns it around for his glory and for the benefit of that one. How many of you believe the Lord can turn around situations in your life? Amen. Because he's a compassionate God. It's really not just your faith. It's really not just my faith. At the end of the day, it's dependent on his character and what kind of a God he is. His nature of being an empathetic God. And it's more than enough to perform a miracle. Remember the family? Yung, siguro naman maalala mo pa yung kinwento ko, yung four deaths. Hindi, kailan yun? Nagkinwento ko kanina eh. Ikaw naman oh. Gutom lang yan. Okay, four deaths in one month, remember? I, I officiated. I, I did a memorial service on one of their loved ones, for one of their loved ones. And then I prayed that prayer and I said, no more death in Jesus' name. Not my, not my strength, of course. It's Christ's grace upon. Have mercy upon this family. And so even after I prayed in front of them and they were in faith, when I sat down, uminom nuha akong tubig, sabi ko, Lord, napanindigan mo yung prayer ko, please. I don't want to sound like a false prophet hereafter. And it's just like flattery, words of flattery without action. Ayoko naman yun. Panindigan mo yung prayer ko, Lord. I actually asked one of the relatives yesterday, how was it? Kasi they celebrated the one-year death anniversary of the person I did the memorial service last year. July din yun, 2022. So July, ngayon, July pa rin, no? 2028 na ba ngayon? 2023. One year. And I asked, how is it now? Alam mo sa namin, praise God, Pastor, the death has stopped. Amen. Come on, we can praise God for that. Not the again. And I look at this message. God has the ability to turn it around. Remember na in? Bago mag ten na in? Pleasant, beautiful village. But because of the grief and pain, it wasn't a pleasant village. But because Christ came into the picture, the city lived up to its name it became pleasant again. Let me tell you, no matter how unpleasant your life is, he can turn it around and make that life beautiful again because of his empathy and his mercy. Come on, claim that this year. He can make it beautiful again. In one of our couple's small group, um, patapos na ako. Love, patapos na ako. Yung asawa ko sabihin niya, over time, ako. Strict. One of our couples, last 2021, sa small group namin yan, yung isang couple, 2021, they got married. Wow, they experienced the provision of God. 2021. Lockdown yun, eh, ba? So, they got married. And then after a few months, they conceived. Myla, they conceived. And they were excited. We were excited for them. And then they found out within those first three months, ni trisomy, ni chromosomal issue, yung baby. Trisomy, oo. And so there were complications. It's not, uh, it, hindi siya, they won't live long with that condition. But anyway, they were in faith months after, and then she gave birth prematurely. And then the doctors were already saying, it's not gonna last. So 2022 last year, when she gave birth, they gave birth, Ang nangyari nga, they were in the hospital, Niku, ICU for more, almost two months, and then the baby passed away. And it was a sad moment for us. We were grieving, we were painful, in pain. Um, we tried everything we could. We'll just listen to them all the time and just be there. Namatay din yung baby July 2022 eh. 
last year. Grabe yung July 2022. Ah. There's something there. It's grief and pain, unpleasant, the opposite of naim. And traumatic for them. Kasi sinasabi ng doctors na baka meron talagang genetic incompatibility kayong dalawa, have yourselves checked. Di ba? Uh, so, baka mahirap. If you get, if you conceive again, baka pwedeng same situation. So, but you know, after a few months, both of them then decided, no, we will step out in faith. We know God is gracious. And so that's what they did. Whether trisomy, trisomy again, or chromosomal issues, genetic compatibility, they don't care. If the Lord grants them that, then they will accept the lot of God that the Lord has for them. But if not, they'll praise God. Praise God anyway. So they tried after months. July yon, mid-year prayer and fasting. You know, weeks maybe after, or a month after, they actually conceived. So siyempre, to, 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 first three months malalaman eh, to may condition. Praise God, the first three months, nothing was found. The baby was normal. Amen. Walang complications. No, so it didn't happen. And so months after, syempre hindi ko na mabilang, I'm not really a woman, OB or whatever. The baby developed and formed, and just a few weeks ago, July, she gave birth. And I asked that yesterday, Josh, how is it? I mean, you know, the doctors were amazed because when the baby came out, the baby had a high APGAR score. Very normal. Premature pa. 35, 36 weeks. But she gave birth to a healthy baby boy. Last year, July 2022, Unfortunately, the Lord had other plans. She gave birth to a daughter. Noah was the name. You know what Noah means? It's comfort. She, now they gave birth to a baby boy. Baby girl, baby boy. And they named him Lucas. You know what Lucas means? Bringer of light. So in the midst of the loss last year, they found comfort in God. They named them baby Noah. They named their baby now Lucas, which is God's light. That in the midst of a dark 2022, 2023 is the year where the Lord will shine forth his light in every area of their lives. You can turn it around. Siyempre ako nalang nagsabi nun. Hindi nga na sinabi yun. It's just my looking back that he is a God who can turn around our situation. Verse 16. Siyempre, basahin po natin, fear? O siyempre, nabungo yung patay eh. Natakot ka talaga, di ba? But, they glorified God. Pwede pala yun. Yung takot mo would lead to the glory of God. So, okay lang matakot. Sini dito may kilala ka yung pasaway sobra. Yung napangiti ah. Meron, meron. Tapos, natakot kasi munti ka nang mamatay. Nung natakot siya dahil munti ka na siya mamatay, ginlorify si Lord. Nagsimba na ngayon. Sineryoso si Lord. You know what I'm talking about? So okay din yung fear pala. As long as it would lead you to glorifying God. As long as it will lead you closer to Him. That's amazing. I mean, the Lord uses fear also. And it was said here, a great prophet has risen among us. And God visited his people. Ano yung sabihin nito, Rich? A great prophet has risen among us. Babalik tayo thousand of years back. Ku ano yung clamor ng mga Israelites. Sa Deuteronomy chapter 34. Nung namatay si Moses, kasi si Moses was a great prophet, correct? Oh, babalik tayo, rewind ah. Thousands of years after. Nung namatay si Moses. Great prophet. He died. Tinanat si Deuteronomy 34. And there has not arisen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, none like him for all the signs and the wonders that the Lord 
sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land. Yung commentator ng author, yung comment ng author after writing Deuteronomy is, alam mo, wala nang Moses, no? Kailang kaya darating yun? That would lead the Israelite nation to God. Si Moses kasi ginawa yun eh. Yun yung parang sinasabi ng author, ng writer. Wala na. Wala nang pumalit kay Moses. Pinakamalapit si Elijah. Pero wala na, no? Alam mo yung may side comment yung mga scribes. Hindi yung scribes na lawyers, ha? Yung nagsusulat. Yun yung comment niya dito. After Deuteronomy. And let me tell you, Christ came. 1,000 plus, 300 plus, plus years after it. Hopefully my timeline is correct. A great prophet has come again. And that's the person of Jesus Christ. To lead his people back, not from the slavery of Egypt, but the slavery of sin. And to bring all of us back to God. And for all the mighty power and all the great deeds of terror that Moses did in the sight of Israel. That's Jesus. Pentateuch, alam nyo ba yung penta? First five books. Pentateuch points to Jesus. It's actually yung clamor ng Old Testament. Kailang ka darating? Ayan na, dumating na. Christ. He's the great prophet that has risen among us. And this report about him spread through the whole Judea and all the surrounding country. Old Testament points to Jesus. No, this is it. This is it. He has come. And when he has come, how many of you believe he can turn things life, he can turn things around in our lives. Amen? He can make the ugly beautiful again. An ugly na in into a pleasant, beautiful place because of that wonderful miracle. Let's all stand today. It's his compassion. that causes him to perform miracles. I want to pray for two things today. I want to pray for, number one is, do you have any loved one here who's at the point of dying? And you're believing God for healing? Anybody, can we raise your hands if you believe for a loved one who's yung nabigyan na ng tanning ng doctor? Um, yeah, I see those hands. And we're a church community here. We're going to pray for that. If you have a loved one or you know someone who's maybe, or maybe you, maybe you, at the point of dying, may tanning na. How many of you believe the Lord can turn it around and the Lord can extend that person's life? And so we're going to take a step of faith today, brothers and my and sisters. Nothing is impossible with God. He can turn things around and He can heal. Lift both your hands if that's you or you have a loved one. Lord, we're committing our loved ones to you. Can you blurt out that name or maybe silently just say the name of the person? In Jesus' name, you will perform a miracle. Sickness, that disease, will not kill him. And we're commanding that disease and sickness to be God in his body. Even to some of us, Lord, our loved ones who don't know you yet, Lord, you are the great prophet that has arisen among us and you would do that sign and wonder that will point him to you. So Lord, in the name of Jesus, let there be an extension of life. In the name of Jesus, let there be many years ahead that he will know you, encounter you, and spend time more with his family and loved ones in Jesus' name. Nothing is impossible with you, Lord. We're taking a step of faith here, and we're just merely claiming the promise of healing that is avail available for each one of us, Lord. So I'm believing, Lord, for healing and a second life in Jesus' name. In fact, I've sensed that maybe some of us need to visit him or her in the house. Some of you need to take that step of faith as well. You visit that person and loved one in the house. 
Then you start praying. It doesn't have to be a uh, flowery, uh, ano ba tong, highfalutin prayer. You just need to be there, lay your hands on that person and believe in Jesus' name that healing can come. Amen? We're going to be in faith. Miracles for you and miracles through you. And once you pray, let the Lord's will be done. Let the, His will be done as you take a step of faith. If some of you here today, you're just like in a dilemma of a widow. This year, July na eh. So mid-year na, no? And it's really not been a tough, it's been a tough year for you. Uh, it's been a year of trauma. It's been a year of pain. It's been a year of grief. Uh, the first six months, at least 2023. And you're believing God to make the ugly pleasant. You're believing to make this year anain, a beautiful, pleasant year still for the next coming six months. You're believing God to turn it around. Just lift your hands. I'll pray for us. Father God, turn it around in the name of Jesus. You are a turnaround specialist. You can make something ugly into something beautiful that will benefit us and ultimately glorify and honor you. So in Jesus' name, May you show yourself. Can you show yourself powerful to us, Lord? Can you show wonders and signs in our lives so that at the end of the day, you will be popular and famous in our family, that you will be made known to my children and to the people around us. May you turn around situations in our lives, in Jesus' name. May we leave this place today and face this week with hope and faith. Because even in the impossible, you can do powerful things, Lord. And that's our prayer. We worship a powerful God because you are a compassionate, merciful God. Bless our week this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Be in faith this week. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week. If you need prayers, we'll be here to pray for you. See you.